United Against Cancer. Fantastic. My name is Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu. I'm a pediatrician, uh, but more of a cancer advocate working in women's health uh, from Nigeria. I'm also a third time board member of the UICC, which I know that you're also members of. And the yeah. essence of this interview is to try to exchange um, I, information and knowledge amongst the members and to see uh, how we can learn from each other using the internet and digital technology that we have at our disposal. So very laid back, no, nothing technical. Um, I know that, uh, so let's hear a little bit, tell us about yourself, a little intro of your profile, please. Great to meet you, uh, Zainab. Uh, my name is Tegi. Uh, I'm a medical doctor by profession, and I have been working in the health sector for 23 years. Um, so I did my master's degree in Australia in public health and health management and PhD degree in Russia. And I have been working, um, as I started my career at the, as a doctor at very rural health facility in Mongolia. I had been working at the Ministry of Health at the uh, government agency on uh, regulating medicines at the World Health Organization. And uh, mm -hmm. for the last 10 years, I have been working as a founder and CEO of the National Cancer Council of Mongolia. Excellent. So, of course, I was looking at the profile of cancer in Mongolia and the whole demography of the place. And um, we can see that NCDs do have a large role to play our, in the death statistics of the country. Uh, the population of Mongolia right now is about 3.5 million. Yes. Four million. yes. So, and the total cancer cases in 2018 was over 5,000 and over 3,000, nearly 4,000 4, deaths from that. So that's a very, when you look at the new cases and the number of deaths is a lot. So I can understand the need, uh, but tell us why did you start the National Cancer Council and maybe a little bit about the National Cancer Council of Mongolia. For the recent, recent statistics, for example, last year we had more than 7,200 new cases of cancer. So it means that the number of cancer cases are increasing. And as you uh, know, Mongolia ranks um, uh, the highest in death of certain cancers, uh, especially from liver cancer, stomach cancer. That's why uh, the cancer is a big uh, burden for, for health system in our country. And um, National Cancer Council uh, is a charity organization that was established 10 years ago. And we try to fill the gaps um, where the government can't reach and support cancer patients. So we, uh, on one hand, we support cancer patients. So we provide them home away home, uh, provide transportation services, psychosocial support services, provide educational materials. So this is um, uh, trying to help cancer patients. But on the other hand, we try to be, um, to be advocates for cancer issues in our country. And we, we mostly work on um, cervical cancer, pediatric cancer, and try to advocate for the improved access to treatment, improved care, and provide some evidence-based uh, advocacy and tools. Yeah, very interesting. Yes, I saw from the profile as well uh, that you focus a lot on cervical cancer and childhood cancers. And um, you were recently at one of the major WHO meetings. So that is, but how would you say, do you think that in the years uh, of your running the council, is it 
has it become more of a priority for the government of Mongolia? And how is the government responding to cancer as a disease and as a life-threatening condition to its people? Yes, uh, we can observe that over the last uh, few years, government started to um, pay more attention on cancer and cancer is the one of the priority areas of the government. And especially we have a lot of uh, progress in terms of cervical cancer and pediatric cancer in our country. You also have some hard to reach areas and rural areas in the country. How do you, how the, and then you, you are a health systems person, you have a master's in health care management. How do you deal with the hard to reach areas? As an advocate myself, I know the, even the terrain in Nigeria is much bigger, uh, but to travel sometimes to the hard to reach areas, to the inner communities, for instance, delivering HPV vaccine, or even telling them about it and then going back to deliver the vaccine is a problem for us. How are you dealing or how are you finding that? Yes, Mongolia has a big territory and relatively small population. And as yes. you mentioned, it's very difficult sometimes to provide uh, good quality services for the uh, residents living in very rural and remote areas. And um, mm. that's why the government is trying to um, achieve um, universal health coverage, leaving no one behind, and uh, mm. especially for the people living in rural and remote areas. In terms of cancer care, government tries to decentralize the um, health care so that people who will be diagnosed with cancer can have a, at least basic cancer treatment uh, in the area they reside. Yes. Yeah, so they try to provide chemotherapy at all provincial hospitals so that people wouldn't have difficulties to travel very long distances to the capital city just for chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, but for surgery and radiotherapy, definitely it's centralized so that patients should or uh, have to come to the um, capital city for the treatment. How many radiotherapy centers do you have in the capital? We do have, yeah, we do have only one radiotherapy center. Mm -hmm. So uh, only National Cancer mm -hmm. Center is our main hospital that provides radiotherapy okay. for okay. the cancer patients. Good. Um, well, I think for the population, as long as it's working properly and you can expand as the economic situation allows, but when it's working properly, and I'm sure you have the same challenges of the uh, technicians to maintain the equipment, the clinical oncologists and everything. Uh, so are you seeing a lot of um, improvements in digital technology? Like, are you able to send your x-rays and films uh, via the internet uh, to uh, radiologists abroad to see, to review? Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely this is the area um, which is very important, especially for the countries with the big territory using mm. internet and all mm. these new technologies, mm. IT mm. technologies in the healthcare is very important. Mm. So uh, we have relatively good internet coverage and most of our province hospitals and even small uh, rural areas are well connected to internet. That's why doctors can send uh, some um, images to the upper level healthcare professionals for the consultation so that they can get immediate um, advice and so, yeah, okay. treatment. Okay. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, yes, I'm glad to hear that because really digital technology is the way of the future and it's going to have a huge impact on cancer control. Especially with the um, new artificial intelligence um, uh, in digital technology in healthcare, we see that it, uh, it will make a lot of changes in the cancer control. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.